boom, boom, boomer. Soon as picked up a recruit, adding to this big class, we picked up a commitment from three-star offensive tackle out of the NFL Academy in London. It's going to be significant when I talk about it in a minute. Daniel Akinkumi, the big offensive lineman, has picked the Sooners over the competition. So we're going to dive into that commitment, the teams that were looking at him, and the significance of this type of player that Oklahoma's picking up. We'll dive into that in just a minute, but before we do that, welcome to Unfair Sports. I'm your host, Jay. Thanks for pulling up to the channel. Let's dive into Daniel Nkunkumi's commitment to the Sooners. Of course, you're going to look at his measurables. We're going to dive into kind of what this means for Oklahoma as well. This will be the 25th commitment for Oklahoma and and the third offensive lineman to join the class. And so, actually the fourth. So we already got three committed. So let's dive into Daniel, look at the film and the measurables and go from there. All right, here's the numbers on him. Six foot five, 320 pounds of man. Out there in London, the Nigerian-based, London-born offensive tackle, as I mentioned, comes from the NFL Academy out in London. And the real big significance of that is he didn't start playing football until like 2021. So two years ago. And at his size and his agility, you're going to see something special like for example, here you can see him working against some of the other players there at the NFL Academy, and you can see that he be muscling folks. Like, he's strong, nice frame, and the cool thing about Daniel and and why he's a player that Oklahoma will go after, not only is it because he's, you know, at the NFL Academy, but at the same time, he's the type of player that Bill Beatonbow looks for. He can play all five positions on the line. And so Oklahoma beat out the likes of Miami, Baylor, Clemson, as well as Ole Miss. Penn State was on his list. He got a lot of offers down the line after he started doing some training and really coming around. And people see the raw talent, the raw talent that's available. And like I mentioned to you before, the one thing you recognize about Oklahoma and what they do when it comes to players like this is they beat and bow likes guys that can play off positions. We noticed that recently. Like For example, Caden Green, the, the uh, offensive tackle recruited out of last year's class, the true freshman this year, played in the Texas game. He had to play guard because we had an injury to McKay Matower as well as Troy Everett was struggling against Big Sweat. And he was moving weight. That's the type of player you get out of Daniel. And so as the film is rolling, maybe just knocking folks around. He's big. He's strong. Uh, he can move. He runs a 4840, was the fastest 40 I've seen on his Twitter account, which is even better. And he's one of those players, like I said, can be molded into the one that beat Bo can leverage. I mean, he adds to the list of versatile players that we've added to this campaign. Caden Green is just the most recent great example. Tyler Guyton bringing him in at right tackle to protect the blind side of Dylan Gabriel, who's a lefty. And then big Walter Rouse, you know, you want those players that no matter the situation or the position you need them in, you can just toss them in the game. We talked to Sam Mays on the last live, you know, the former All-American from Oklahoma State, and he talked about how difficult it is to play multiple positions. And hell, Daniel's got video of him actually snapping the ball as well as a center. So it's not a he's not a player that's just going to be, you know, in one spot. He's one that can be moved around. And so that's something that you have to be excited about. And so you add a player like Nkunkumi to your class. I mean, 25th player, fourth on the offensive line. Told y'all, man, I think this class is going closer to 30 when you, when you really look at it. But, you know, at his size, at the 6'5", 320 range, I know he's trying to drop himself to under 20% body fat by the time he hits the collegiate ranks. He's at like 23%. He could probably make that, but adding him with Josh Sosa, you put him out there with uh, Eugene uh, Eugene Brooks, also with uh, Isaiah Autry. And with Autry, he looks monstrous right now. Like I was looking at some of the film and talking to um, Coach Marcus Dent, his uh, his pops. You know, we were talking through all of that, and kids looking looking stout, and so. That is why you would see Oklahoma go after him. Now, I know a lot of people, you know, as we go through, you're going to have the haters in the comments. Oh, he's a three-star. You guys can't get five stars. But if you've ever paid attention to how Beaton Bow works, that's not what he goes after. He goes after players that are versatile. He doesn't go after players that can only, quote-unquote, one-trick ponies. He needs guys that can move around the line because 
He wants to teach you everything. And that makes you even more marketable as a big man, right? The ability to play multiple positions make you more valuable because it's not easy going from left to right. It's not easy going from guard to tackle. It's not easy going from center to guard to tackle, right? Like, that transition is not something that's just the simplest. And ask any offensive lineman, they'll tell you that. Like I said, former All-American from Oklahoma State, Sam Mays, was on the show this past uh, weekend. And he talked about the difficulties of the offensive line and how tough it is. Hand placement, foot movement, and just being able to move. I remember listening to another offensive lineman talk about I can't think of which podcast it was. But they talked about how your foot movement is different on one side to the other. And then, of course, you got to have cohesion on the line because you're helping each other out, especially going up against a lot of players. And so having a player like Daniel who can do both sides as well as in and out, shh. That makes you dangerous because then when it comes to recruiting, you can just recruit the best player at all the positions you want if you don't have to go for versatility and you can just shift the chess pieces around. Find whichever spot's the best for him and put him to work. Daniel's one of those players that could shock people. Now, he's only played football for two years. And so, and being at the NFL Academy, of course, his ranking's not going to be as high as you would traditionally believe. But please believe, as hard of a worker as he is, don't be surprised if he walks in here and starts taking people jobs or trying to. Because I could definitely see it out of a player of his caliber. Dude's talented. So that is Daniel and Kunkumi. Hop in the comments. Let your boy know what's your thoughts. The class is growing. We're getting close to the end. I think we've got at least two more commitments coming down the line. I'm anticipating within the next two weeks. One that we'll definitely be watching is Michael Boganowski, which is on the 19th. That's a Thursday. Definitely going to be keeping our eyes on that. It's like 4 o'clock Central Time. We'll be watching out for Bog, for Bog and seeing if he decides that Oklahoma's the move. I mean, the Kansas fans as well as Kansas State fans keep telling me that that's the move. I'm just waiting to see where he makes his decision. If Oklahoma's a spot to come play Cheetah slash linebacker. You know, we're going to be excited about that. If you've made it this far, you like the content, hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. We would love to have you join this family of college football fans as we're talking OU football and college football in general. So, YouTube says check out one of these videos. I highly recommend it because I curated for you for, with other commitments. And uh, we'll see you all on the other side. We'll talk soon. Peace.